Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to this edition of the program Jones and Company. On this program we examine national issues. Last weekend, Bahamians were blushing and bubbling over with pride as the Bahamas hosted the IWF World Relays and what a success those relays were here in New Providence and all week Bahamians were talking about it as well and uh, the brand the sports in paradise is being uh, promoted uh, throughout the world now I suppose as athletes went back home talking about running in paradise and how well it was to be in paradise well today on our program we're going to talk about the games and we're going to talk about some other issues in the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture. And our guest on the program today is the Honorable Minister, Dr. Daniel Johnson. Uh, it's a pleasure to have him here today. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Jones. Uh, it's wonderful to be back uh, here again with you. Thank you so very much. And um, uh, you, you are hosting this weekend another distinguished um, event, I suppose. Uh, you can tell us about that. Sure. Um, we just left Paradise Island where we welcomed uh, Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins. Um, for Bahamians who follow the Dolphins, which are a lot of people, um, for those who follow Dan Marino, um, I, I hit a couple of shots with Mark Duper, Super Duper. The two Marks were there. Um, and we're going to have a dinner reception for them this evening. But tomorrow at 9 a.m. at the National Stadium, Dan Marino will be throwing passes and doing a clinic for young Bahamian kids who are interested in football. And as the football season starts, our Sports in Paradise brand begins to extend itself into uncharted territory. We have the Dolphins here for training camp. You know, we had the heat earlier in the year. We have the Dolphins now. In September, we will have the classic football bowl game between um, historically back universities and colleges. We await to see who is going to win that classic. In October, we have a major uh, English football game. You get caught up in the two footballs. One, you should not use your hands, but that's a soccer game. In November, we go back to NCAA basketball. The battle for Atlanta is on. And we close out this year with December with the first NCAA Division I football bowl game, Christmas Eve, Nassau, Bahamas, 12 noon, carried on ESPN one excellent um, you're doing some great things uh, what is the program all about what what, uh, what are we seeking to achieve I, I heard you mention uh, sports in paradise on my radio program but mm -hmm. uh, tell us more about it uh, sports in paradise is, is a simple formula um, it is something I've been listening to um, some of my forebears for many years for, from you know Kendall Nottage's time, the first minister of sports, um, right up to now, myself, uh, the Honorable Perry Christie, um, who have looked at sports as a part of national development, an economic plank. And it was for our generation to make sense of it, just like we're trying to make sense of a country with 700 islands and keys. Um, and we're trying to make sense of how do we develop a sports industry. And we thought, well, why don't we take the brand, the Bahamas, and attach it to other number one brands. Why? Because we are a number one blue chip Fortune 500 com company, country, brand. Mm -hmm. That is what we are. We don't use it and treat it as such. And so I sought to juxtapose our brand with the best in the world. And that's what Bahamians saw this weekend. They saw what we could do if we are serious about our brand. The Sports in Paradise extension now is that we're going to go on tour. I'm going to do the same thing with culture next year. Mm. The tour is simple. The PGA, you enter the PGA tour, you get with the best sponsors, the best broadcasters, the Gulf Channel, you're in Singapore, Taiwan, Taipei, Africa, Asia, Russia, Malaysia, United States, South America, Caribbean. Why? You're on the PGA tour. You can do it with motorsports. If you go with the, the Monaco Grand Prix, brings the best of motorsports to Monaco. You can do it with football. You can do it with basketball. You can do it with baseball. You can do it with boxing. And so what we have done with our brand, Sports in Paradise, 
is that we sought to launch this brand on this occasion of the World Relays to the world proper, not to people in South Florida, Atlanta, New York, to the world proper, because the world has already changed, and the market now is a global market. So we have to do a mm. stop, top sports product in a top first class fashion that broadcasts to the world. Is it working for us? Um, what are the benefits to the Bahamian people? Um, yes, uh, many spectators uh, go to these games and uh, they have a grand time, it seems. Uh, but l let's talk about the overall benefit to the country. Well, How do you measure it? If, if you look, two, two ways. One, the obvious upfront scenario is tourism is our bread and butter. And so it's a tourism product. And traditionally, we sold sun, sand, and sea. That's what we used to sell uh, when everyone was into bauxite bananas and you know baseballs. We had sun, sand, and sea ahead of the rest of this region, and really, in some cases, ahead of the rest of the world in sustainable touristic development. Everyone is caught up. Some people have passed us. So I said, let's add another S, like the old 3S tonic, which our grandparents used to use mm -hmm. as fine. I said, let's add another S. We put sports on them. So now we have a sports tourism destination, and your brand must come out as number one. The first event you do must be world class and first class. So if you're adding something to this brand that is the Bahamas, and it's our role as government, you know, to really protect the brand. This thing that we grew up thinking Bahamians could do anything, we could be as good as anybody. We are the greatest little country in the world. Every time you put that brand on display, you got to make sure that what you said is true. So we put our brand out there and added the next S. So we have Sun, Sand, Sea, Sports, Tourism. And we showed what we can do. The effect is every hotel room in Nassau was full last weekend. Every seat on a plane coming to this country was full last weekend. Every seat in that stadium was bought last weekend. And everybody who saw it understood there's something special happening here. Mm. That's the net effect. The biggest part for us was really a group of people, 30,000 people who came over the two days, who said, boy, I'm proud to be Bahamian. 250,000 people who watched at home said, I'm proud to be Bahamian. The Tribune, one of our greatest critics of this government, full page, not half page, not quarter page, full page, proud to be Bahamian. That is the net effect of putting your brand on the world stage. Mm -hmm. And um, you didn't mention the impact that it had overseas with them, um, because I'm told that uh, there were a whole lot of people who were watching um, in Europe and elsewhere. The, the viewer um, audience for that, as the international broadcasters have confirmed with us, was 198 million people worldwide. 198 million people watched that live, and even more watched it on delayed broadcast and every newspaper, every broadcaster from every country, every continent on the planet, Asia, Africa, Europe, Australia, Eurasia, South America, North America, woke up on Monday morning to magnificent reports about the Bahamas. The European track and field magazine, which is called Spike, donated not one page, they donated they dedicated the entire magazine to the Bahamas. The entire magazine to the Bahamas. The, 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 the most uh, critical broadcaster from the United States said he has never been to such a well-organized event and met people with such poise and talent. Not just the people on the track. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm driving my ministry into. I want us as the Bahamas to go into the business of sports. So you couldn't pay for, for the exposure? Never. Never. Mm -hmm. um, Minister, as I mentioned to you in another uh, program, something must have gone wrong in, in those games that no. you didn't 
uh, that didn't hit you, well, that didn't no, meet I, with only your one, well, one thing. Um, I would say one thing. Um, I, I off air, someone told me that they didn't have water. That uh, a twelve liter bottle of water was costing two dollars, and uh, the uh, unavailability of good drinking water. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just yeah, picking no, a, a you, simple little thing. No, if you thing. pay the $2, you just, get the water. I'm, I'm picking a commercial that little, thing, that little no. thing to indicate that something must have gone wrong in your mind. No, nothing. Nothing went wrong in my mind with this event. The only thing, and God works in mysterious ways, mm. for me went wrong, because I had Ramon Miller. Ramon is the own Ramon Miller, the young man who won the... Um, last leg of the Olympics, 2012, London, August 10th, 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, he got injured. And Shanae Miller was injured. And so th those two individuals, if, I think if they were in the race, in the finals, we, we may have seen two gold medals for the Bahamas. And, and that, that stadium would have lifted off of the ground they would claim a spaceship lifted off in Nassau. Mm. And the, we wouldn't have had a national holiday. They give you all the week off. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was so close. You know, the Americans beat us by, you know, half, just half a second or just a fraction of a second right at the end. Similarly, you know, with the female race, if we, I, I wish people were, were there to see how close it was. But next year, this makes us even harder. That's the only thing that went wrong for me, is that I wish that Shawnee was in that, the finals, and I wish Ramon, I wish she was healthy, and I wish Ramon Miller was healthy. Okay. You and I wish we had won two gold medals on that track. But our athletes did well. Wouldn't Very well. Oh, no, team, team Bahamas performed fabulously well. It's the first time, Mr. Jones, that our countrymen, we've heard about them, we've seen them on television, <laughs> We, we, we've, we've watched the Olympics, the World Championships, we've watched all of these things, <coughs> but we've never really got a chance to see them home. Yes. I mean, they were home. Yes. They were with us. You know, I mean, and when, the, when they came around that final bend, the people in all the corners, that's why I tell them, there's no bad seats in that stadium for, for relays. The people in all the corners, and they turn that bend and you hear that noise. I walked up into every corner of that stadium during the races, man. Mm -hmm. And on the final bend at where this 100 meter starts, if you could, could bear the noise in that quadrant, it was deafening. I mean, just 100 decibels as they turned that corner. Yeah. I mean, that's Bahamian pride. And this is the first time we really got to see these kids on their home turf competing against the best in the world. And that's when people realized subconsciously Wait now. And this is what Kendall Knott has talked about, sports power. In industrial nations, nuclear nations, nations with great armies, great economies, you have America, Russia, China, Japan, um, Brazil, England, France, Germany. Those are the big boys mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. We line up in that same quadrant with those same people the biggest boys in the planet, everybody, the biggest fellas on the planet. You realize that? Mm -hmm. And Bahamas is considered as someone who could win. That is when you know that Germany, you know Russia, about. Japan, China, United yeah. States, England, we could win. I, is it an exaggeration for Bahamians to say that uh, we are a sports power? No, it is, it is an absolute fact. Uh, per capita, um, we have 28 medals in international competitions per 300,000 people. Very few countries on the planet can brag that. We are, we are in the tops in um, boxing. We're in the tops in sailing. We have been to the tops in volleyball, softball, baseball, basketball. We have seven NBA championship rings mm -hmm. per 300,000 people. Tell me what town in the United States can say that. No towns in Europe, no towns in, in Asia, no towns in Africa, no towns in South America. We, we have demonstrated to the world that for such a small place, we're in it. For instance, in the finals of the men's 4x4, 
You know, we are a country of 300 plus thousand people. We were the ones to, the only ones really who could control and perhaps defeat a country of 300 million people next door with a nuclear arsenal, a, a several trillion dollar economy, a massive infrastructure, an enormous army. And we are this little country sitting right on the side in the islands of the stream of 300,000 plus people going up against a world power. And that world power had to fly in the best that they had the night before. Many people would say to you that, uh, well, you are uh, uh, bragging about this, um, but these athletes are doing well because they're trained in the United States. Um, they are doing well because of proximity to the United States, that they benefit from the sporting programs in colleges and universities uh, in the United States. They, they, they have some refinement in that environment, but Ramon Miller trains here. Ramon Miller, who really uh, has demonstrated his prowess, he trains here. By the time as we send them away at 16, 17, 18, I would put it to you that they have all the ingredients needed for success. Um, we, we know, and I'm a trained clinical psychoanalyst, we know with children, really by age 12, 14, you have imprinted in that child's mind and in their body all of the things that are going to carry them into adulthood. Um, so they go somewhere to finishing school, but the product that is produced is here. And in the future, we must refine them here. We can refine them. You know, boat trains in Jamaica. Do, do we have a, a real um, sporting program no. uh, uh, that um, Jamaica apparently has mm -hmm. a well-organized, um, robust program. Are we in that league in terms of having a robust program? Not, not yet, but soon. The interesting part of that, Mr. Jones, is that Jamaica came here in the 1980s at a NACAC conference and really <coughs> borrowed <coughs> from the Bahamas the idea of centers of excellence that uh, Perry Christie, B.J. Nordage were told to explore by Lyndon Pindley. They borrowed that from the Bahamas. Went ahead and did it. We didn't do it. We see their result. They have surpassed us. I am going to embark upon this summer, this very same summer, National Sports Academy, which is simply getting the best talent we have in the environment necessary to get the best out of them to wear our flag and win. That is, that is what we are about to embark upon. It is going to be the most exciting program we've ever had. But it's not just for track and field. It is for cycling, boxing, sailing, volleyball, baseball, basketball, soccer, etc. We have to create a farm and nurture what it is we have because we know we have so much. And this isn't just for sports. Sports is one analogy. And I try to show my colleagues and friends on the weekend, this isn't just something we could do for track and field. You could do this in any area of Bahamian development. Yeah. Engineering, well, science, yeah. technology, uh, painting, agriculture, art, music, design, anything you wanted to put it to, the same model, the same system, you got to build yourself a farm. Do we ha is, is your ministry capacitated uh, to do what you are talking about. Uh, do you have the structure in the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture to bring about uh, these programs that you are talking about? The government has been talking about um, austere um, measures, um, uh, and you can see it from the presentation of the uh, current budget before the Parliament of the Bahamas. Uh, would you have the resources to do the kinds of things that um, you wish to do as the Minister of Sports? Uh, y yes, sir. I, I read your newspaper's editorial uh, today, and it talks about vision and will. Vision and will. And when we look at the financial standing of the Bahamas compared to anywhere else in the region and most places in the world, money is not necessarily our problem. It is how do you administer it? what you do with it, where you place it, and how you use it. Money is a tool, just like a carpenter has, he comes to the job with his tools. A great carpenter 
with the right tools will do fabulous work. But, but don't, don't blame the tool, it's the carpenter. It's the same tools. A dollar is the same dollar. We have enough dollars in the Bahamas to do what we need to do. We have to understand what do we want to do with it. But we, we must not think that money is always a thing. You could put a lot of money into bad ideas and you get nothing out of it. It's not about the money always. <laughs> it ain't about the money. Yes. It, it is a vision and the will to do it. We have hundreds of retired coaches around here, defense force officers, police officers, uh, people with great technical acumen who would be willing to assist. They're on pension. You know, people got angry when, you know, we brought out some of the prisoners to clean up around the area, around the stadium. You know, but they're young men. Some of them are former sportsmen. Mm -hmm. Some of these guys are the best carpenters and masons in the country. They want to contribute. And I understand you had a, a hundreds of volunteers. Hundreds and years. hundreds of volunteers came out. People with who are hoteliers. I, the former managers from the Hilton, managers from various hotels around the Bahamas, they came as volunteers to the games. They, they assisted in how do you greet people, how do you do this, what's the interface, what's the first thing they're going to see at the airport. We had managers from major hotels, Bahamians, meeting people at the airport, man. Hello, sir, how are you today? We understand you're from Senegal. It's so good to see you. Yada, yada, boom, boom, boom. We have your hotel ready. We got the car ready. We have this ready. Anything you need, let us know. But that's what they provide to the tourists at Atlantis. That's what they provide at the Hilton. Why wouldn't you provide it for your country? Okay, let's take a break here. Um, this is Johnson Company. Our guest on the program today is the Honorable Dr. Danny Johnson, and we are uh, talking about uh, sports, but later in our program, we're going to talk about youth development and culture as well. Uh, we take this break. We'll come right back.